So Ben Dunn, how are you, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm really good. I'm really good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's an absolute pleasure, you know, and, uh, you know, we wanted to talk to you a little bit about this uh, Frank Mueller collaboration that we've done as well, because your website was one of the first to champion these watches. And I know that you had um, a wonderful Black Dial 3 counter watch that you actually sold as well. But I want to talk a little bit about how I discovered your website. So your website to me represents really the future of uh, curated um, watch retail. And I love this incredible combination of wonderfully researched articles that you have in combination with, you know, your phenomenal taste in watches, right? And I discovered your website because I was um, researching this extremely long article that I wrote on the <laughs> Audemars Piguet Perpetual Calendar. And um, as I was re researching the reference 5548, which was launched in 1978, um, and was actually the watch that saved Audemars Piguet, and not the Royal Oak, although the Royal Oak certainly helped, I landed on your article and I was like, oh my God, this is a treasure trove of information. I'm going to steal it all. No, <laughs> okay, so I, I would say that I, I it was a great um, opportunity to have such beautifully researched material for me to work from. And, and I did mention it in the article when I wrote it because I, I just thought it deserved a shout out. But how did you... <clears throat> How did you create Watch Brothers London? How did you come up with this idea of having, you know, just awesome storytelling and articles uh, and education along with really cool watches? Sure. Well, firstly, thank you so much for the uh, the kind words and intro. Um, so yeah, I mean, Watch Brothers London, although it's got brothers in the name, it is actually just myself. It's a long story of why it's called Brothers. Um, but yeah, I mean, it started as a side thing, uh, to be honest, uh, and it started with the article. So I think the AP uh, QP article was one of the first alongside the, the Royal Oak uh, mid-size 14790. Uh, and yeah, I, I started writing those because I was just seeing a lot of watches listed uh, as the wrong reference or people buying thinking they had something else. Um, and it was confusing out there. Uh, and I didn't come up with all that info uh, myself. There's a lot of really knowledgeable collectors who helped me, such as Watches and Guinness uh, on Instagram and also Chaka70. Uh, those guys contributed heavily. And it's it's, it's very much like um, an ongoing document. So even yesterday, um, I was editing a little bit to add a bit more about the skeletons. So I actually got one, got one on now. Um, and it's one of the early ones, but that reference wasn't mentioned. So it's it's always developing and great to hear from people uh, when they show me stuff I haven't seen. Uh, but yeah, but it's it's mainly just the, the sales corner side of it is just my taste. So the, the Frank Muller was a brilliant example of this. I just saw it on Instagram, actually, and just fell in love with it. I just thought this thing is crazy cool. Uh, it looks great. Everything I look for in a watch, it has. Uh, I'm very much aesthetic focused. I have like a design background. So for me, how a watch looks and how it feels, how it makes you feel is the number one and two thing. And then the movement uh, again is up there. But for me, it's the aesthetic and feel was the first part. And that watch really had it. And I was lucky enough to uh, get that watch from a collector in Italy just before the Brexit and like chaos happened as well. So I was like looking at the tracking, like, come on, before end of the year when all the uh, all the borders started closing and luckily it got here just in time. And then, yeah, I opened the box and it was even better than expected. Uh, and then I remember trying to shoot it. It was actually really tough because it had a gloss dial. Um, and I just shoot everything on my iPhone, even now. Uh, and it was really hard to capture uh, that watch. And I remember doing like one or two takes of it. Um, and yeah, I miss it. It went to the US and I haven't heard of it since. Uh, and it's the only one I've had. And I've always just kept an eye out and really admired other people selling them because they're beautiful watches. Amazing. Well, you know, I, again, it's a tribute to your great taste. I mean, when I go to your website, I love the fact that you kind of got to things like the 5548 or the 222 or the King Midas, like a little bit for everyone else and really helped to sort of shape people's opinions around them. Like yourself, the first time I set eyes on this Frank Mueller uh, chronograph reference, well, actually two of them, because there's a, a, a two counter version with a silver dial that's 36 mm and then the black a dial version with three counters, which is 37 anima. I, I just fell in love with them, right? And I, I yeah. want to know more about them. I later discovered from my buddy Nick Rudez, who's the managing director of Frat Mueller, that they were uh, created for an Italian um, uh, retailer. Um, and I have, I, I've heard it might be Carlotti, um, but I'm not a hundred percent sure. But apparently, that that's that's the guy. Um, but the watches were just ravishing. You know, they're everything I wanted in a chronograph. I love the apply brigade numerals. I love like, you know, the the reference, the clear reference to the 1940s paddock, like the Tassi Tondi, the 1463. And it was so interesting to me 
that in the 90s, you had two incredible independent watchmakers, Frank Mueller and Roger Dubuis, both making watches that were kind of referencing the, the, the 1463. Roger Dubuis with the H40 or Homage, which came out in the late 90s. And then Frank here in the mid 90s with this incredible watch for the Italian market. Uh, and then, of course, I wanted one, right? Um, <laughs> and like yourself, like I, I was desperately trying to seek out like one in every corner of the earth and I just couldn't yeah. find one. And I think um, Jeremiah, who you'll meet shortly, was like, why don't you ask Frank Mueller if they'll actually make one or two for us, right? So I, I went uh, to uh, Watchland and I, you know, I, I like kind of humbly begged them, like, would you consider to remake this for us? Um, and they actually said, you know, that's not a bad idea. We actually really interested in this era of our history. Um, but then we started talking about the movement and the initial idea was to have a automatic movement, which would change the dimensions of the watch altogether. Yeah. So. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know how you would feel about that, but for me, that was like clearly a no go. You know, I mean, yeah. like, so yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah, the DNA is is the movement of this piece um, for sure. It's just on that quickly. It's funny because I reached out to you about this watch about ages ago, and I was like, you know, can you tell me anything about this? Because I'm trying to write the description. Uh, apart from saying it looks incredible, like what else can we add here? Uh, and you were at the time just like, you know, I'm I'm in early talks. Uh, and then I got really excited about that. And then now it's here. It seems crazy. It's a full loop uh, that we've got back to it. Yeah. I mean, you know what's super interesting is if you look at these two watches, like the H40 from Roger Dubuis and this um, Roger, uh, I'm sorry, and this Frank Mueller, what we're calling kind of the tribute chronograph, they they both reference um, the same era and probably the same watch, but they I think they were created with two very different intentions, right? So if you look at the um, H40, it's only made in precious metal. It I think costs sixty or seventy thousands was francs when it was created. Um, it has a Geneva seal, a certificate of chronometer from Besançon, and then the Frank Mueller's were you know quite a bit less expensive, made in steel, brushed to steel. They were yeah. anti magnetic. Instead of the um, the Lamania twenty three ten, they're using well at least in Speedmaster terms the successor to that watch was was the one eight seven well in, in at the time it one eight seven three but these are one eight seven fours right yeah. and uh, and it's much more of a workhorsey kind of watch but a really great looking one I don't I don't know how you feel about that you know yeah no I agree I mean it's got all the striping and finishing as well to match and that, that's kind of the bit that was missing for me with the original like you've got this great front turn it over and I want to see the back. And I know like historically or traditionally having the closed back is there. Uh, but for me, you know, with the design focus, being able to see through and talk about the back and the movement is an extra part of it as well. Uh, so that's why I was really, really happy to see that there was the both options with the two cases, well, the two, two case backs. Yeah, I mean, that was the the really entertaining part was was finally, because I started to get kind of depressed because they, once they started to tell me the dimensions of the watch, if we had to put an automatic movement in there, you know, it was just like, wasn't the same thing anymore. Um, and then the then Jean Luc Blenat, who's like the product director there. I don't know if he had this up his sleeve the entire time, but he just kind of wandered off, and then he came back with these trays. And I was like, oh, well, what you know, what does he have in his hands? <laughs> and, and I looked down at them, and he's like, here we have some uh, new old stock um, Lamania one eight seven fours from the nineteen nineties, right? Um, which were the exact movement that went into these watches. Um, would you consider to use these if we refurbished them completely? And I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> like, I can't believe you're giving me this opportunity. And and then the major question came up as, as, as you had said was like, so, okay, we understand that Frank's intention of this watch was to make it sporty, water resistant, anti-magnetic. And it actually says anti-magnetic on the dial. Like um, what are we going to do about the case back? Cause we really want to see this movement. It's just like a, you know, a time machine movement. And finally, uh, Jean-Luc and Nicholas were like, simple solution. Let's give everyone two case backs. So you've got the Sapphire one if you want to like look at this amazing movement. And then you've got the solid one if you want to properly make it anti-magnetic. I kind of feel that everyone's going to buy this watch um, or these watches and keep the Sapphire on and kind of just keep the uh, solid ones. Just kind of a, a cool thing to have uh, for your desk, you know? Yeah. And I love the engraving on the solid one as well. You know, it's kind of like the, it's the message, you know, here we are, we're create, recreating it. Uh, this is a limited edition, et cetera. I know it says that on the, I think on the display case as well, but it's nice to see it fully engraved on the solid case back as well. Totally. And then with the uh, 30th anniversary of Frank Mueller logo as well. Okay, then with no further ado, because I know we're sending a couple of these over to you as well, Ben. Um, oh, and we're going to switch over to Jeremiah. So we want to show you the watches because we just got them in and we would love to get your opinion on them. Amazing. Hi, Ben. It's good to meet hey. you. I know, you you know we spoke, we spoke uh, through... Uh, 
through text. You know, we were really hoping we could get the box set to you and you'll be doing the unboxing for us on your end. <laughs> but unfortunately, that, that didn't work out. So Don't I'm going to try it so good. on the computer. Awesome. I didn't realize today was a new, somewhat of a new watch, NWA for me. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> it's early in the day for this. I love it. So here we go. I'm going to try to angle it to... Lovely. And the box as well is very, is it the same, same box as uh, the original ones? It's, yeah, it looks very similar. It's beautiful. No, so Love that. There. You can uh, take out their watches and show them to them individually. Sure. Okay. I think we'll start with the silver one. And we've been trying to do some research on the availability on the secondary market. And it seems that, you know, dealers like yourself and even the auction houses, uh, it seems like the three counter black Dow one is a lot more commonly found. I mean, even though the, the limited edition series was 50 pieces in the 1990s, but yeah. you just see these two counter silver Dow ones. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've only seen one or two of the like, silver Dow come, come to, uh, come to market. A question on the dial texture. Like I absolutely love what you've done on these. Uh, I haven't actually handled the white one, the old white one. So the, these new ones, they seem to have like a nice textured finish across both white and black dial. Uh, I'd love to know, you know, the process there or the, the thought behind it. So we actually like examine the original watches um, under magnification. And, and actually Frank Mueller had the, the, you know, the specifications of the dials as well as all the other aspects of the, uh, the case and, and movement in their um, design files. And they were like, you are aware that the um, majority of the dial is actually what they call grené or like um, like a sandblasted kind of finish, which yeah. you don't really see that much if you're looking at the black dial version, but actually yeah. it is there. Oh, I see. And so then, you know, what we said was, um, okay, so because I love frosted dials as well. I said, okay, yeah. can we enhance um, all of the different finishes so that they contrast that much more? So I think especially on the silver dial version, which is what I love about this watch so much, you yeah. really all the different contrasted in finishing. So you see the circular brushing um, where the, the track is, you know, for uh, the, the minutes um, and also for the tachymeter. Uh, and then you see um, uh, this sort of wonderful grené or frosted finish in the center of the dial. And you've got these wonderful um, applied indexes, the Breguet 12 and 6, and then these dot markers. We actually asked them to also kind of like sex it up a little bit with those. So to, to make them a little bit more voluptuous and sexy, you know. Yeah. So well, kind of yeah, I was going to say the two tone effect is stunning. You know, even on camera here, it looks crazy. Uh, and I love the size of the numerals. So I was looking at the the, the black dials from from the past, and some of them have larger ones, some of smaller numerals. The size is just perfect. Like the symmetry is beautiful. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so that's one of the things that we wanted to do is we want to go with the the like larger and more exuberant numerals, but like really keep the balance of the dial. Um, and so we also enlarge both of the, the the watches. So from 36 and 37 mm respectively, we went to a uniform 39 mm, which we think is really balanced for today. And actually still, I mean, the size of the movement also still feels very balanced in there too. Yeah, um, yeah, it really does. And then one thing we wanted to do, because these were, you know, obviously inspired by the 1463 um, and the case maker of that was uh, Francois Borgel, right? Um, we wanted to add the Tasti Tondi um, fluted pushers. So, because the original ones were not fluted. So I don't know if I can catch yeah. that here. But yeah, no, that's a beautiful detail. I was reading about that this morning and then looking at the photos of the old one. Yeah, I love the fluted pushers. It's stunning. And the crown's slightly larger as well, is it? Yeah, larger and 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 flat, you know, because like the yeah. the original like 1463 crowns as well. So they, yeah. you know, I have to say Frank Mueller basically it was incredible. They like made an all new case and dial for this watch. You know, yeah. it, it had a had you know one person asked me, it's like, well, a question about the pricing because it's like, hey, it's the same movement that's in Speedmasters. I'm like, yes, but first of all, that movement's no longer available, um, and these are vintage movements from the 90s. And second of all, imagine a watch manufacturer that would go through the process of making an all new case construction, all new yeah. dial. Construction brown pushers everything to make a watch just because we thought it would be a cool idea i mean hats off to frank mueller um i mean they just they just crushed it yeah i mean it's beautiful the side profile as well the way the looks uh turned down i love that's, that yes the turn yeah and that's very you know uh, 1463 as well and they feel it feels yeah. on the wrist 
And so I just want to show you one kind of oddball watch as well. Um, so when Frank Mueller himself um, heard about this project, he's like, well, if you guys are going to remake my old chronographs, you have to make the chronograph that I'm most famous for. Um, and you have to remake this watch, which is his double-sided chronograph. So it's double-sided because, you know, you've got the chronograph on the front of the watch, um, uh, the chronograph hand on the front of the watch, but then it travels all the way through and you have the chronograph hand on the back of the watch as well. So when you start it, the chronograph hand starts to go uh, clockwise, but then when you flip it over, because it's attached to the same pinion, it goes counterclockwise, but it's, it's cool. so easy to read these huge scales as well. And I kind of feel that this was the inspiration for that, you know, the the, the Snoopy when he's in the spaceship. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. And this this one is really interesting to me. I'm a, an absolute sucker for this kind of dial. And you can probably pronounce it better than me, my northern accent. <laughs> the Giosh style, style dial, uh, yeah. you know, in black is just killer. Uh, yes. And the, 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 um, the, the pusher for the Retropant. Um, being in the crown this is new to this model that you've brought out or this was from a previous this is how, model. This is how frank wanted it um, when he did a split second versions of this as well what's new for this mm -hmm. model is he hasn't done a split second version of this in the original dimension of this watch Got which it. is 39 mm as well um yeah it got bigger with time you know as everything did um but yeah. we wanted it this original size and the, the most hilarious thing was um i was like Hey Frank, I didn't I didn't know you had like the the rights to use you know Richard Hobring's um, split second you know uh, module because he was the only person that I knew of who had modified you know a seven seven five zero to have a, a split second module. And he's yeah. like, no, I didn't. I just made my own up. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. So that, was, that was really cool. Um, yeah, it's a great watch. I have to say, like the more I play with it, it's just such a fun watch to play around with. You know, I don't know if you can see it here, but the the split. It like it just it's really crisp. Um, yeah. And then I'll stop it and then reset and you know it's just a great watch. So yeah. anyway, um, I know your primary interest is in the Lamania watches, but if you want just to play around with it, we're happy to sell it. Send one of those to you as well, uh, just for fun, right? Awesome, awesome. Yeah, I mean, the more I look at that one, you know, the more I get obsessed with it. <laughs> See, the other two were just similar to um, you know what I had previously, um, right. but yeah, I'm, I'm very much into more complicated pieces these days, you know, like all these QPs, et cetera, is a big focus. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you did write one of the best articles on QPs as well. <laughs> That's too kind. Uh, still developing, put it that way, yeah. Well, if there's anything we can ever do for you, uh, Ben, um, it would be a pleasure. If you ever come to Singapore, you got to come have a drink with us. You got to have a Negroni over there. And if uh, oh, I come, come to London, I'll, I'll, I'll let's let's do the same thing. We'll find uh, your local and we'll go do that as well. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sounds great. Ben, thank you very much for everything. Uh, congratulations on Watch Bros London, and uh, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you, my friend. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me, and uh, have a wonderful evening, uh, and I'll hopefully catch you all soon. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.